Now, there are some agreements that we, you and I, may consider agreements that cannot stand. Yet, before God, they can stand. Let's, let's look at those, those kind of agreements. One of such agreements is what I call an unholy alliance. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, God asks a question here. He says, he says in, in, in the verse 14 of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? So God is saying, don't enter into such an agreement. It's an unholy alliance. A, a supposed holy person and an unholy person? No. Don't forget our holiness at the get-go is because we, are born, because we have come to Christ. That's what makes us holy. We are cleansed. In verse 3 says, and what accord has Christ with Belial? You, the believer, you are seen as Christ. Remember I told you that under this new covenant, it is Christ. We are, we are Christ. So we come under him. It is he that is seen with Belial. And when God looks at the unbeliever, he sees a sinner. He sees, a, he sees Satan's uh, 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 child. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? You are the temple of God. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. So when a believer enters into an agreement with an unbeliever, it is an unholy alliance. Because the holiness of the believer does not change the unbeliever. If anything happens to the unbeliever, it can affect the believer. Let's look at an example now. I'm not, and this does not, this is not about employment, no. We are talking about here partnership or marriage. You want to enter into a business partnership and you are now a partner with an unbeliever. If there is a message that goes out to say, begin to slay unbelievers or begin to uh, strangulate the businesses of unbelievers, it is that unbeliever that is sin. And as they are going to strangulate that business, it will affect you. In 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 1, I'm not going to read it. You can read just one verse. The Bible tells us about how wealthy Jehoshaphat was. But then he went and entered into an unholy alliance with Ahab by marriage. He committed his son to marriage to Ahab's daughter, a daughter of Jezebel. Because of that alliance, when Ahab wanted to go to war, he called on Jehoshaphat and Jehoshaphat had no choice but to help. It was a war in which Ahab was going to be killed. The word of prophecy came. The prophets of Baal were there. Joshua was sitting down there and said, No, isn't there a prophet of God? He, he knew what was right to do. Said, isn't there a prophet of God? And prophet of God came. But Ahab refused to listen to prophet of God and still went to war. Joshua still followed him because of that alliance. Still put before Ahab the resources of Judah to prosecute a war that he had no business with. Then Ahab told Jehoshaphat to go into battle with his kingly robe, but he will go as an ordinary soldier. Meanwhile, the enemy had said, we don't want to touch anybody but Ahab. So please leave every other person alone. Go for Ahab. So when they saw Jehoshaphat in his kingly robe, they changed that time thinking that he was Ahab. Jehoshaphat had to scream. Say, I'm not the one. I'm not the one. I'm the king of Judah. They confirmed it and they let him go. Then a soldier privilege just shot randomly and it struck Ahab and Ahab died. What happened there? God helped Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat could have been killed because he had entered into an unholy alliance with Ahab. When he returned home, a prophet met him and said to him, it is because God has seen good things in you. That's why you expect. He said, should you go and be helping the wicked? Should you go and be helping the, 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 the unbeliever? And that was 
that put paid. Then, because of this continued relationship and alliance with Ahab, with Ahab's family, even though Ahab died, his son had taken over. Jehoshaphat went to do a business partnership with, with Ahab's son to send ships to go and bring goods. The ships sunk. They never made that trip. Why? God did not sanction that. And God said it clearly to him. It's because of Ahab's son. So be careful when we think we can gain something from entering into partnerships with unbelievers. It will not end well. And we know, of course, what happened later. Jehoshaphat's son died. In fact, when Jehoshaphat, when Jehoshaphat died and the son took over, the first thing he did was to kill all his brothers and half-brothers. Everybody that was related to, to Jehoshaphat, that was a child of Jehoshaphat, he killed all of them so that he could be alone there. And then that was because he was, Bible says, because he was married to Athaliah, Jezebel's daughter. And he, he formed his alliance closer with Ahab's children in Israel. And he became more wicked. Eventually he died. And his son took over. Jeze uh, Ataliah's son. Jezebel's grandson. He also was wicked. When he heard that his um, cousin had become, uh, had, uh, become ill in Israel. He went to see him. While he was seeing him, Jehu had come to implement judgment on the house of Ahab. This son of Ataliah was in that place at that time. And two of them rode to go and meet Jehu. And Jehu slaughtered the two of them. He killed the two of them. He died. When Ataliah heard that her son had died, Ataliah now began to kill all her grandchildren. So that she could be queen. Only one boy was rescued. That is what an unholy alliance can cause. So such an alliance. God, 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 God will be watching you as you are entering into it. But you will see the challenge there. So don't enter into an unholy alliance. It will be, God will see it. He will not say anything. The day something is going to happen. You may not be protected. You may not have the kind of clout. That the Jehoshaphat had. And you may go down. A second type of wrong script agreement, which is scriptural, that is wrong, is the one where the one in view, Ananias and Sapphira. Where you are aware, but you said nothing. By the grace of God, next week, when we talk more, we are going to discuss some issues, some things. We'll look at we'll now look at this in some in some area. But to help us understand it, we will look at, let's just consider the story of Adam and Eve. That is two, two, husband and wife. In what we call an ungodly alliance. An ungodly alliance. An ungodly alliance is an alliance between two believers, ostensibly. But God is not present in that agreement. They agree to something. But God is not a part of that agreement. That's why it is ungodly. Without God, apart from God, unholy alliance is one in which one of the parties in that agreement is not a believer. That's an unholy alliance. An ungodly alliance is one in which both parties may be believers, but God is not a party to that agreement. It's an ungodly alliance. When Adam and Eve agreed to eat of the fruit. Eve ate of that fruit and brought it to Adam. Even though Adam, did, you see, Adam could have said, why are you, uh, is this not what God said we should not do? He didn't say. He took the, the fruit and ate. He had been bound into an ungodly alliance. Now, some people have wondered why Husband and wife will be having disagreement. I'm going to say it here now. We will discuss it later, but here and now, let me say it now. That there is no place in the Bible where it is documented that husband and wife must be in agreement. As a matter of fact, the relationship between a man and his wife 
is a relationship of a union on the one hand, and on the other hand, a relationship that requires checks and balances. Each one is checking and balancing the other. So where the husband is doing something wrong, it is in the place of the wife to call the husband and say, Dear, are you sure, have you prayed about this thing? Are you sure God is asking you to do this thing? He, she cannot force the man not to do it. But she can at least call his attention to it. And then she can go and pray to God about it. If judgment is going to come upon that man, she will be spared. Because she did not consent. It proved by her actions. Even though she said nothing. Even though she, may, she, she was not able to stop him from doing it. But by her actions, she proved that she was not in concurrence with what he was doing. If a wife wants to do something and the husband does not agree with what the wife wants to do, the husband, he cannot force her. You are not, you are not supposed to use, apply any physical force, restrain her, beat her. No, 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 you can't do that. But you can let your wife know that I'm not in agreement with this thing and then go to God in prayer. If something were to happen to your wife because she has stepped out of what she should be doing, the judgment will come only on her and not on the husband. Why? He showed by his actions that he was not in agreement with what she had done. So let's not get ourselves confused in thinking that we must always concur. No. It is the same principle that applies in a situation where your general overseer, your bishop, your senior pastor, or your pastor asks you to do something that you know is contrary to the word of God. You don't have to insult the person, but you won't do it. And you go and pray to God about it. If there are consequences, you will serve the punishment, but you won't do it. When judgment comes, it will come on that man who asked you to do it, even though you refuse to do it, and it will not affect you. Why? Because you have taken God, you, as in one individual, you have taken God as your party, as, as, as your, as your uh, what do you call it now, the one that is in agreement with you. So that is an unholy alliance where two believers are in agreement on something, but God is not a party to their agreement. That's an ungodly, an ungodly alliance. It's an alliance that God is not present in. An unholy alliance is an, is an alliance in which you have a believer and an unbeliever or two unbelievers. Anything two, two unbelievers agree to is an unholy alliance. But if a believer were to be part of that alliance, it's an unholy alliance all the same. We need to be very, very careful when we enter into these agreements. The last one is what I call an unrighteous alliance. An unrighteous alliance. In Proverbs chapter 1, Proverbs chapter 1, from verse 10, the Bible says, My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. It starts by saying, don't consent. Then he breaks it down in verse 11. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait to shed blood. Let us look secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like shoal or hell and whole like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil, casting your lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. But they lie in wait for their own blood, they lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owner. So God is saying, any agreement that has within it deception, Fraud, theft, murder, lying in wait, and so on and so forth is an unrighteous 
alliance. God is not party to that. Definitely, God will not be there. And it's unrighteous because what they are trying to do is unrighteous. Acts 23 verse 12. Let me just read it. says, And when it was day, some of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under an oath, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. That is an unrighteous alliance. They banded themselves together. They came under an agreement. God definitely was not here because Paul was God's own and they had agreed that they were going to keep Paul. He didn't stand. The Bible says, in gathering they shall surely gather together. But because their gathering is not by me, whatever they have plotted cannot stand. So, a Christian does not need to worry when the unrighteous people are banding together. Even if a Christian were to band together with an unrighteous man for an unrighteous act against that Christian, it cannot stand. Why? God is all-knowing. God is all-seeing. 